Now coming on disability, the GCS. So basically, uh, GCS is a we defined by eye opening, how the patient is uh, eyes are responding, verbal response of the patient, and motor response of the patient. We grade GCS. The best GCS we can have is fifteen by fifteen, and the lowest is three by fifteen. By this, E four stands for that there are spontaneous eye movements of the patient. E3 stands for when you give verbal command to the patient. You say, hey, open your eyes, open your eyes, then the patient open, your eye, uh, open their eyes. It shows that the patient's uh, eye opening response is E3. If the eyes are responding on pain stimuli, even on speech, the patient is not responding. You give them pain stimuli, the patient eyes get opened up that suggests that the eye opening response is E2. And if there is no response at all, it defines that the E response, that the eye opening response is one in these patients. Verbal response V5 is basically when the person is oriented to time, place in person, giving uh, correct answers, what you ask for. If you ask uh, what is the time today, they give you the correct time, which place you are in, they give you the correct place name. So it defines that the patient is oriented to time, place, and person. Now, V4 stands for the patient is able to talk, but he is a bit confused. Now, V3 is basically inappropriate words. You ask for something, but he is blabbering something. They can be inappropriate words. Now, incomprehensible, incomprehensible sounds, that is V2, is just making, mm, uh, not responding to your commands, uh, not giving response, uh, any clear verbal responses there. So it is V2. And if there is no verbal response, it is V1. Same with motor response. M6 is when patient obeys commands fully whatever you say you they move it until unless their movement of the particular limb is restricted by some injury now motor m5 is moves to localized pain you have given pain to a specific uh, part of the uh, arm okay in, uh, then the patient will able to localize at that part now flex to withdraw from pain that is m4 you gave a pain and the patient flexes to withdraw from that pain. Okay. Uh, M3 is abnormal flexion and M2 is abnormal extension of the limbs. M1 is that there is no response in, even after giving deep pain stimuli. So the lowest is three, that is no eye opening response, no verbal response and no motor response. And the best is that you and currently me is having, that is 15 by 15. And in disability, the second thing is pupillary size and reaction to the light. In major head injury, uh, injury patients, there is can be a possibility that the pupillary size is pinpointed, uh, no reaction is there with light. There can be anisocoria as well. That means unequal pupils can be there. So we have to check for the pupil size and the reaction from the light as well. Now, further on, going ahead on exposure. So whenever we get a patient, if we expose the patient fully, but later on, we forget to cover it as well. Now, by that, we expose the patient to cold environment and patient might, can lead up to uh, hemothermia. Now, whenever we get a patient, expose it, examine it, but later on, cover the patient fully. Uh, if patient is already having hypothermia, cover the patients with blanket or you can use external warming devices as well. We can give warm IV fluids high volume fluids warmer to heat crystalloids that we can use okay uh, we can uh, set a target of fluid as around 39 degrees celsius if we don't have fluid warmers we can use microwaves as well but we cannot warm fluid 
sorry, we cannot warm blood in the microwave. Okay, so warm fluids are the preferred ones, warm blankets and external warming devices to be used to make sure that the patient will not land up into hypothermia. Now, going ahead for A, B, C, D, E, whenever we go in, we think that, okay, we have, we have find something on the uh, breathing part. So at that time, we can order for the point of contact uh, test. We find anything in the abdomen on exposure, we can start with uh, the fast scan. Now, what are the point of contact tests, which can be done quickly and the reports will be handy. Now on ABG, we can go ahead for uh, to see what is the pH of the patient, what is the base excess of the patient, because these are the two indicators which will indicate the shock in an early stage. Even before your uh, blood, uh, this blood pressure goes down and you see that there are tachycardia. So now there are two best indicators for uh, assessing that the patient is landing into shock. That is low pH and base excess levels. Now ECG can uh, give you indication for any arrhythmias. RBS can tell you uh, if, if the patient might be having any history of diabetes and going ahead in a hypoglycemia, you think that the patient airway is not patent. And by doing RBS, we can see if the patient is in uh, hypoglycemia, we can induce uh, dextrose and the patient's uh, sensorium gets better. Now on chest X-ray, we can go ahead for portable chest X-rays. Uh, by doing that, if the patient is not stable, we cannot move them to radiology for scans. So portable chest X-rays are the preferred one for sick patients. Uh, to rule out any pneumothorax, hemothorax, any uh, other injuries, tracheal injuries. Uh, the, and then going ahead for pelvic x-rays. Pe pelvic x-rays can also be portable. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you suspect a pelvic x, uh, pelvic fracture, go ahead for pelvic binder as early as possible. Now, Later on, if we find that there is any abnormality on the abdomen or we, if we suspect any injury over the abdomen, we have uh, checked for the breathing and in auscultation, we find out uh, any muffled heart sound. So we can go for EFAST. That is an extended focus assessment with sonography in trauma. That can be done on bedside and we can see any free fluid in the abdomen. Along with any uh, <clears throat> cardiac tamponade, we can see then even if by doing e fast we can see say, uh, see the status of aorta as well where uh, the major injuries can happen <laughs>